Hello, this is Tony Melendez, and I'm so happy to be with you. Our program's about Holy Thursday, and you know what's special about Holy Thursday? The feet, these things right here, the feet. Jesus gets down, and he washes the feet of his, his apostles. What a gift. What a gift. Well, let's get into a prayer. Pray with me. I want you to pray with me. So we ask the Lord uh, to be with us. We ask him to help us uh, in the times that, you know, are maybe a little bit tough, a little bit difficult. Maybe if we're mad at someone, maybe it could be ourselves. Uh, healing. Oh, we need a lot of healing sometimes. There could be a sick individual in your family. We pray for them. As we pray, especially during this Holy Week, let's prepare for the Lord's coming. So sing with me, uh, prepare ye the way of the Lord. It's not that difficult. It sings like this. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Not hard, right? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Here we go now. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Here we go. Sing it with me. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Here it comes. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Yeah. Lord, two more times. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This is it. Last one. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Of the Lord. So what does the Lord do? He gets all his apostles together, and this is where our mass comes from. The Last Supper. Can you imagine being at the Last Supper where Jesus is at the same table with you and other friends? So now, let's turn to the Gospel of John and hear our scripture reading. This Gospel comes from John 13, 1 through 15. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not at all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on, he reclined at the table again and said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for I am indeed. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. He's 
washing your feet. He's washing your feet. He's washing your feet. He's washing your feet. He's washing your feet. He's washing your feet. He's washing your feet. He's washing your feet. Now, Jesus washed the feet of the apostles. Now, you go wash the feet of your family, your friends. Go wash the feet of someone else. Did you realize that Holy Week is a special time for families? When we get together, we come to church. Uh, there's these four special days that are just so beautiful and have so much about Jesus and what he has done for our salvation. And it's just a time that we could appreciate the Bible and hearing scripture. Um, as a family, I, I feel proud that sit by my wife and my kids there in the pew. And today I got my lovely wife here with me. And I always love when the family members with me uh, at church, it just makes it even more important to have someone to share it with. Uh, and that's what's beautiful about Holy Week, about going to church. Let me introduce you to her. Her name is Lynn. And when I first met her, it's like, uh, I love this lady. <laughs> we fell in love, got married. We have two kids, Andres and Marisa. Uh, but I want my honey to share a few words. So please, honey. <laughs> One of the most special times of day for Tony and I is when we get to sit down together and share the word. We like to be able to have our cup of coffee in the morning and read the scriptures of the day and maybe talk and pray on them a little bit. And so we spent some time in prayer over this gospel reading about the washing of the feet from the gospel of John. And you know what struck me about that is that the gospel started out saying that Jesus knew that this was his time to pass from this world to the next. He knew that he was going to die. And I started thinking, when you know you're going to die, you have all these things rushing through your head. Who do I need to visit with? What do I need to tell them? What do I want to leave behind? And so Jesus must have had those thoughts too. He chose to celebrate the Passover meal with his dearest friends, a Jewish festival, the Passover meal. And it became really important for us too, because it became symbolic for us as well. That sacrificial lamb on the Passover meal now got replaced by Jesus as the sacrificial lamb. And during that meal, he did something that was really important. He wanted to show his disciples what true discipleship looks like. So he got on his knees and washed the feet of his disciples. Now, I don't know. Yeah, like this. When he wants me to give him a pedicure, I'm not really that excited about it. They're dirty. And these disciples had some pretty nasty feet. I don't live in the desert either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they walk around in dirt and dust and gravel, and those feet, I'm sure, were pretty beat up and blistered and not really pretty. <laughs> and Jesus got on his feet and, and washed, got on his knees and washed their feet. And it was such a humbling moment. And he told them, as I'm doing for you, you should go and do for others. That's what true discipleship looks like, being a servant to others. Yeah, we have a beautiful example in Mother Teresa. Uh, she wasn't afraid to go up to someone on the floor. Here they are, they're, they're sweaty, stinky, you know, maybe sick. She'd just go down, pick them up. The children, you know, there's flies running on their face. And um, she'll just pick them up and take them home, help them get healed, give them a place to at least recover, and then kind of send them off when they're a little bit better. Uh, that's not easy to do. I tell you, I'm afraid of those people. I kind of, you know, just kind of 
steer away from them. And she had no fear. Her whole community, I admire them. Uh, you know, and she's a saint, honest saint. And I got to meet her one time. I got to meet her in Denver, Colorado. She spoke. There were some disabled uh, individuals. She came in to several of them and talked to them, hugged them, smiled with them. Uh, beautiful, beautiful heart she has for others. But I want my honey to share a few words. And you know, she's a little lady. <laughs> tiny. <laughs> she's tiny. I mean, she probably comes up to my chin and she was physically picking up people off of the street. These are people that were seen as outcasts, people that were sick, ill, full of sores, um, disabled, whatever it was, even the very poorest of the poor who maybe didn't start out sick, but became sick from living on the street. And they gave dignity to these people. They showed them the love of Jesus, to love them unconditionally in their hour of need. And that's what he calls us to do. <laughs> yeah, you know how many people have helped me? They see a, you know, maybe when I was younger, a little kid without any arms. Can you imagine me younger? <laughs> Running around with that. Without the arms, people just help me naturally. Uh, my brothers and sisters would have to, I should say brother, and my two sisters would help me. You know, sometimes they wanted to, sometimes, nah, let him do it. Because he could do it. You know, I could do some things. But just, I can't even begin to tell you how many hands, not just hands, but hearts, have helped me through the years. I am so grateful for that. And, you know, people have come up to me and said, wow, you're such a good person. You take care of Tony. And I kind of laugh because really Tony has a much bigger heart than I do. <laughs> he often sees the needs of others long before I do, and he finds a way to help them. And, and I really appreciate that about him. But there's things that he'll do around our house even. If he knows I'm having a busy day at work, He's washing the clothes. That's what he did yesterday. He washed our clothes and he folded the towels and put them away. He's finding a way to reach out to others, even in what we see as his limitation. And there's a lot of times I've sat in the back of a theater or a church where he's playing, and I see the hearts of people moved by his words and his music. So he is not limited. He's doing the work of the Lord with the gifts that he's been given. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do. Look at what you've been given by the Lord. Focus on the gifts that he's given and pray. Pray to God to say, how can I use these beautiful gifts that you've given me to better serve you? You never know. Uh, honestly, I don't know when, when people are looking at me and I'm playing the guitar. Uh, I don't realize how it's touched them. Uh, my brother has shared stories you don't see them walking away with the tears, you know, because I'm maybe there's lights and this and that or they're far away. I don't see that. Or maybe, you know, my wife noticed someone being touched or move. I'm hoping that you can move someone. I'm praying that you let God use you. Let him use you in ways that uh, only he can control and you are just that vulnerable person's Lord, I'm here. Do with me whatever you want. And that's kind of how I've lived my heart and life. Now, we have a challenge for you, my wife and I. We have this challenge of whose feet are you going to wash? And it doesn't have to be the washing, literally, you know, go, go get some water and, you know, a basin or a bowl, a big bowl and, you know, wash someone's feet but maybe make someone's bed, maybe help somebody. Uh, but without complaining, without, uh, it's something that you want to do. It's, it, it, it has to be in love, doesn't it? It has to be in love. Who are the people in your community that maybe are the outcasts? Maybe are the ones that get left behind at school or get left behind out of the family even? What can you do to be servant to them and to bring them into the fullness of the love of Jesus? Be Jesus' hands, his feet, his heart for someone else. Let's pray together. Yes. Lord God, we just thank you for this beautiful time, this holy week, that we can truly delve into our relationship with you 
and into the understanding of this gift of salvation that you gave us. We just pray for the ability to have open eyes, open hearts. Help us to recognize those who may be in need, those who may be hurting. And let us be your hands, your feet, your voice in service to others. Please send the Holy Spirit upon us to help us to recognize our gifts and how we can best use them to serve you and to love others as you love them. We pray this through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. things must come to pass so listen to what I say tonight will be the last night with you that I must stay take this bread I offer you take this wine also I give to you a new life but for now you'll be alone Peter will deny me three times on this night and Judas will betray me but do not try to fight Take this bread I offer you, take this wine also. I give to you a new dawn, but for now you'll be alone. We'll walk up to the garden, but my friends will fall asleep. Father wills I drink this cup, his promise I must keep. And all these things must come to pass, so listen to what I say. Tomorrow I will die for you for three days. I have stayed The third day I will rise again Never more to die I'll break the chains that bind your souls And give you wings to fly Wings to fly My name is Jose Melendez. I'm Tony's brother. In this uh, final message, we just wanted to encourage you. Tony and Lynn have given you a challenge to not only physically wash feet, but to spiritually do it as well. When I think about that, I think about the words of the gospel and how Jesus knelt and how he showed humility, not only to his disciples, but to the world. Because in that, he was accepting the mission of the Holy Spirit. We need to do that in our own lives. We need to take up our crosses. We need to be encouraging to others. We need to, through action, allow others to know how much we love them, how much we appreciate them. Right now, during this time, it's scary. I mean, and there's depression. There's, oh, so many things. But... Fear is something that we shouldn't allow to overtake us because that's what God shows us not to do. 
He didn't fear. He doesn't fear because he knows. So know in the Holy Spirit that courage that you have, that that ability that you have, that gift that you have. Look at Tony. No arms, but through his music, through his life, he's been able to encourage, to embrace, and to hold hand, even though he doesn't have them physically. So don't be afraid. And uh, I just want to say to all of you as family, meet around the table. Don't just come to eat, but be with one another. Be present to each other. Turn off the television. Turn off the phones. And be present in that moment. You know, maybe that's why we're being called to this. Maybe that's why all this is happening. Is so that we can come back to the table. To the table of the Lord. And so on this Holy Thursday, we give thanks. We pray. And we hope. And we celebrate that Easter is not very far away. God bless you and thank you for being with us.